All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the SMOT algorithm, S-M-O-T-E, SMOT. And it's a term that's uh, being used quite a bit in data science today. I, I, it's a new technique, and I hear it quite a bit. And my purpose in this video is to not give a, get into the weeds and give a very technical discussion of what SMOT is and why you want to use it. Rather, my, my point here today is to give more of a high-level general description of it, uh, mainly for the layperson, just so people that are maybe not a data scientist but work with data science scientists um, may have a better understanding of what the data scientists are talking about when they use that term SMOTE. All right, so SMOTE is a, is a way to balance your data. Okay, so uh, if you have unbalanced data, you can use the SMOTE algorithm to balance your data. So what does that mean exactly? Um, here on the screen, I have an example of unbalanced data, and this is for a machine failure. So we're, you know, we you can imagine the, the variable we're trying to predict in this with this data set would be when a machine is going to fail, right? So we want to build a model that uses sensor values, for example, to predict when a machine is going to break. In this data set, a one represents a failure, a zero represents a, a non-failure. So we have roughly 450,000, 451,000 records in the data set, and of those 451,000, only 617 represent a failure. This is unbalanced data, and it's unbalanced because of the cattywampus um, relationship between failures and non-failures. But it doesn't have this type of unbalanced data. It appears in a lot of situations. You know, you see it in direct mail. You see it a lot because you don't have many people that actually respond to an offer that comes through the, through the direct mail. Um, you also see it in sales, um, you know, cold calling, things like that. Um, but anytime you have, you know, a, an objective or you have a, a affirmative response that's a lot, uh, happens a lot less frequency than a non-affirmative response, or you have a lot more zeros and you have ones, as in this case, you have an unbalanced data. And by balancing the data, what you're doing is you're making this closer to 50-50. So right now it's like, you know, for every failure, we've got, you know, like 10,000 non-failures or something like that. If it was perfectly balanced, we would have one failure for every one non-failure. So it'd be 50-50. All right, so why would you need to balance your data? Why can't you just build a model on your unbalanced data? Um, the simple answer is, is that you don't have to balance it. I mean, I have built many, many models over the years on unbalanced data that looks a lot like this and they've worked really well. Um, in fact, some of them were in production wrapped in some kind of machine learning environment for years and years. So you don't have to balance your data. Um, there are situations where it makes sense to balance it though. Um, usually as a, as a rule of general rule of thumb, if I'm if the end result for a model that I'm building is going to go into the hands of a human being, so a human being is actually going to physically touch the model results and use those results to make decisions, typically I won't balance my data. Um, I'll just go with the unbalanced data. If the results of my model are going from machine to machine or they're not going to go into the hands of a, of a human to interpret, I usually will use, uh, I usually will balance my data. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I won't get into them, but the point is that um, usually the situation will dictate whether you balance or don't balance your data. And a lot of times, you know, you, you, you try both. I mean, you, you try, you build a model on the unbalanced data, you build a model on the balanced data, and um, you look at the results and whichever one works the best, that's the one you go with. So the SMOTE algorithm is going to generate, synthetically generate more failures so that this ratio is closer to 50-50. So instead of being one to every 10,000, it's gonna be one to one. So it's synthetically generating data. So where, how is it synthetically generating data? Is it just picking data out of the air? Is it just completely random? No, it's not random. The, the data that the SMOTE algorithm synthetically generates should be have the fundamental nature of the underlying data. All right, so underlying nature, what does that mean exactly? All right, so this is, uh, let's say that the, the, there's two steps to the process. The first step that the SMOTE algorithm will go through is it looks for groups within your data. So it's gonna almost do a segmentation. You know, you can think of, you know, if, if you had height of humans, the SMOTE algorithm would go into that, the data that has, represents the height of human beings and it would break it into three different groups or break it into different groups. For example, 
Um, those groups could be babies, children, and adults. Uh, likewise, if you have the size of, of football players, the SMOD algorithm will first go in and look at the, the data and break them into peewee, junior high, high school, college, and pro, right, based on the height and weight of the, of the athlete. So the first step in the SMOD algorithm is really a segmentation. So it finds the underlying groups within your data. Once it identifies the underlying groups, it samples from those groups and it samples in a way that's consistent with the data itself. So for example, if you like here on this chart right here, let's go back to the, the babies, children, and adults example. Let's say these are babies, these are children, and these are adults. So SMO will go in and, and first recognize that there's three different groups here. And within those groups, it's gonna generate synthetic observations that are consistent with those groups. So for example, uh, you know, the average here for, for babies would be around 80. So most of the synthetic observations generated for babies would be around 80. There would be some over here that would be around 90, maybe a handful, um, but most of them are going to be around 80. Um, over here you would have the, you know, children. And, um, you know, again, the, the, it's going to sample from the children so that it's consistent with the underlying nature of the children. So the average is going to be around 100. Some may drift over here, just like some of the data drifts over here. But fundamentally, the, the data that is synthetically generated is going to look as much like the original data as possible. And then same thing over here with adults. So just to kind of sum up what the SMOD algorithm is doing is it's going in and it's looking at your data. It's identifying groups of your, in, within your data. And then, you know, you have most algorithms give you the ability to set the number of groups so you can play around with it. Sometimes it's done automatically. But it's the first step is generating kind of doing a segmentation on your data. Then the second step is based on those groups that the segmentation created, sampling from that data so that the new data that is generating, the new failures like in the data set we just looked at, like here, are look as much like the original data as possible. So the synthetic observations that it's generating should look as much like the original data as possible. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thanks so much for your time.